Stocks our strategists feel are poised to deliver positive returns are featured now in their top stock picks of the week. Hi, this is Faraz Mian with the uh, top stocks uh, for the week segment. Uh, uh, with me joining uh, will be Dan LeBeau. Uh, uh, each week we bring you uh, our stock ideas uh, that we see uh, having uh, a good opportunity uh, either on a tactical trading basis uh, or as a long-term investment pick. Uh, my uh, pick is in the later category. I'm uh, going to feature and discuss uh, GE uh, as a long-term investment opportunity uh, for those of you who have a holding horizon beyond the next two, three years uh, and can allocate a small portion of your portfolio to this uh, uh, to this former blue chip that has fallen on hard times uh, and is currently in the process uh, of uh, repositioning itself uh, for, uh, for for a new world. So uh, uh, you likely have heard that GE uh, has had uh, a whole bunch of struggles uh, over the last few years, which were amplified by COVID. Uh, the stock has had a pretty dramatic recovery over the last three months, going up from just under nine to uh, a shade under 12 today, so about a 25% gain. Uh, but it's still uh, a big laggard uh, overall. So uh, over the past year, it's down more than 11%, uh, significantly underperforming the broader market as well as the uh, the industrials uh, space and uh, the the reason for uh, for the uh, for, for the problems with the stock uh, are fairly well known and have been widely discussed uh, so uh, they deal with the uh, the uh, the weak outlook for the aviation market uh, in which GE plays through its jet engine business. Uh, it has a, a very weak uh, and debt heavy balance sheet. At the end of 2020, uh, its industrial leverage uh, was close to six times, uh, which was two turns above where it was uh, at the end of 2019. Uh, cash flow has been a problem with the company. In fact, uh, uh, unlike other industrial companies where the market is looking at trends in revenues and earnings and other traditional profitability uh, and business metrics. Uh, the issue with GE lately has been cash flow uh, and the market has been unusually uh, focused on that metric for the company, uh, primarily for uh, how the market sees as a continued weak outlook for its core businesses uh, going forward. So uh, the bottom line is that the negatives in the GE story are well known, uh, which significantly limits uh, downside risks, in my view, uh, for folks who have the patience uh, uh, for the turnaround story to play out. So. The, the stock is currently trading at uh, about eight and a half times on a forward uh, EV EBITDA basis. Uh, uh, historically, uh, over the last 10 years, the median has been nine and a half. Uh, the high has been north of 15. Uh, the discount to the S&P 500 is the highest in the stock's history. So downside risk, in my judgment, is very low. And to the extent that you buy into the turnaround story that management uh, has been sharing uh, with us uh, uh, provides significant long-term upside potential. So I'm not pitching GE as a tactical trading opportunity, even though uh, for most of the reasons that would 
put a company like GE in the spotlight in the current market, uh, short uh, short ratios or short float uh, and uh, other uh, technical ideas uh, could be applicable as well, but I'm deliberately staying away from that and highlighting the long-term potential. And in that long-term potential, uh, you, you have to acknowledge uh, that the current management team is highly well-regarded. Uh, we can see some of that in their performance over the last two quarters uh, in the Q4 result that came out recently. Uh, the market was impressed with their cash management uh, and also their outlook for cash uh, for, uh, for, for, for the coming periods. Uh, but beyond the quarter to quarter uh, profitability uh, movement, long term, GE is on track to become uh, an industrial company that will offer you significant exposure to the alternative energy space. The, uh, the expectation is that over the next five years through 2025, about half of the company's revenues would be coming from green sources over the next 10 years uh, through 2030, uh, about 75% of the total uh, will be coming from green sources. So you could see GE as a turnaround story uh, that gives you in the long run significant alternative energy or green exposure uh, uh, with very limited downside risk, in my judgment, particularly if your holding horizon uh, is, uh, is beyond the next two to three years. So with that, I'll pass it on to Dan, uh, who has uh, a tech stock to share with you guys. Thanks, Shiraz. So I'm Daniel LeBeau. I'm going to be pitching Skyworks to you today, ticker SWKS. And uh, this company is a huge beneficiary of this 5G revolution. And today, almost everything that we interact with is connected digitally to the Internet, um, which is known as the Internet of Things with all devices connecting to each other and uh, creating this ecosystem of uh, digital technology, so to speak, and this 4G networks that we're currently working on don't have the capability to handle this high volume of data as well as necessary speed um, that we need for our uh, Internet of Things devices as well as our smartphones and um, smart watches and what's going to be smart cities and smart houses. Everything's going to be smart in the future and Skyworks is ushering in this technology with its top of the line uh, RF chips as well as a number of other products that are necessary and not only smartphones but devices of all digital capabilities. So let's dive into the charts of this stock and take a look at how they performed and where they are headed moving forward here. So Skyworks is a semiconductor company so you have these cyclical um, you know performance endeavors here you can see that we had some down quarters here but we have just blown up in the last two um, quarters, you know, with December results illustrating 68.5% top line expansion and almost 100% uh, profitability increase. And this is massive for a company in this semiconductor space. A lot of this push has to do with the new 5G iPhone coming out as Apple is Skyworks' biggest customer. Um, but their Sky5 chip portfolio is accelerating fast and supporting the next wave of 5G launches, um, which include companies like Samsung, Opu, Vivo, um, and a number of other tier one players. And like I said, this company is just beginning to feel the benefits of this 5G revolution. I only expect these massive year-over-year -year returns on top and bottom lines to continue and flow into um, our, uh, our stock here. So let's take a look at our PDE here. This is going to be the price to forward 12-month earnings, and you can see it's kind of dropped off here as analysts really push their EPS estimates across pretty much every time horizon. So trading below a 20 uh, P PDE here is uh, is a deal. I think this stock is trading at a discount right now, and I would not hesitate to jump on um, on the rally here. 
we had these blowout earnings on January 28th, and they were after after hours. So we saw the price action the next day. You can see the price shot up something like 18% from the prior close, and had a bit of a sell-off, some profit pulls with the rest of the market kind of dipping down that day. Um, but you know, we're just starting to digest this information, and I think this stock is a buy today at these 180 plus levels. And I think we're headed towards 200 sooner or later this year. And I think it's going to be sooner rather than later. And with a 1.1% dividend yield, it gives you a little bit of um, of security in this investment. But as far as semiconductors go, this is one of the cheaper ones that I see on the market today. And with a sizable amount of growth potential, they're, they're looking at 50% top and bottom line expansion in 2021. And I think that this stock is uh, is one of those stocks that's being overlooked by the markets and have been overlooked by the markets for some time. And now is the time to jump into it after this stellar earnings report. In the earnings call, President and CEO Liam Griffins said that they'll be investing more and more money in their own internal fabrication and rely less on external manufacturing as the swell in demand continues to hit the semiconductor market. And the company currently has uh, over a billion dollars in cash and equivalents and over a billion dollar run rate. And their post-dividend uh, free cash flow is giving them a huge amount of financial flexibility for continued investment in its own operations, as well as uh, any synergy driving acquisitions that they see uh, in the, the years to come here. So don't forget to check out zax.com slash promo. Right now, we are looking at the election trade, but later this week, we'll be promoting the headline trader, which will be my portfolio, taking advantage of these fast-moving markets and headlines that uh, that will drive price action for many stocks across the board. So that will be coming out later this week at, like I said, zax.com slash promo. So don't forget to check that out. And thanks for watching, guys. Look forward to speaking to you guys next time.